welcome back. We're still a few days away from the official commencement of athletics at the Paris Olympic Games, but there's already controversy surrounding the Jamaican camp. This after suggestions by MVP track coach Stephen Francis that the country might not have sufficient alternate participants to compete in the rounds of the 4x1 relay due to what he describes as the J3A's lack of foresight. Almost at the same time as the relay. And so that means that three of the sprinters they think they have are now out. But I know that they're not going to have enough people for the 4x1 relay. <clears throat> it's probably not going to have a team. Right? And when all that needs to happen is that the GOA find a hotel next door, put up the people, give them some food, right? And they come in and run in exchange for somebody else as needed. But it, maybe the management of that is about my pay grade because I really can't see the problem except jealousy and stupidity. Jehu Gordon now joins us on set to assess Jamaica's predicament. Jehu, we've seen this situation, and of course, it's not unique to Jamaica because news just coming in is that, for example, Favor Ophelia of Nigeria has not been entered to run the 100 in Paris. It's their best shot at a medal in the 100. But, you know, closer to home, we're seeing where Jamaica has three women in the 100 and an alternate in Sasha Lee Forbes. As it stands, they might not have enough people to run the four by one because those three women will be involved in the 100 meters through the rounds as well. What do you make of what goes on? Well, I know, I know in recent developments, I think as of Tokyo 2020, the Olympics decided to use five persons. So normally for world championships, etc., we would have six persons that make up a relay pool. But now we have four and five now being listed as the reserve. So Jamaica is in a very, very tight predicament whereby three of your runners here now may not be available for the team. Mm -hmm. Is it now that we are going to see them take the risk to run the heats and jeopardize one of their individual events or just completely scratch from the relay or whatsoever? Are there alternatives, based on what you know of the, these dynamics, huh? are there alternatives? Because, I mean, there are other runners in the camp, for example. There's Lanier Thomas who's running the 200. Um, there is Akira Nugent who's running the hurdles, both of which are capable of running a relay leg. But are they good enough? The question is, are they good enough to get you to the next round and get you to the final? Is that a risk that they should be taking based on the decisions made by the IOC? If you do not have the other members really ready for the job at this point, given the individual <laughs> factor, they may have to take a risk. When we go back to the world relays this year, we saw that Jamaica chanced it with the team that they sent out. If they do not send their strongest team for at least the first round or one of their strongest team, yeah. I don't think I'll see Jamaica coming out of the heats. Yeah, and Jehu, you, um, having competed previously, been a part of a system, I'd love to get your take on how um, mishaps and situations like these affect the athlete. And I'm saying that because there were numerous storylines going into the Olympics where, you know, an athlete was told they'd be competing, then their names were left out of a list, or they were told that, you know, you go ahead and you handle the funding. If you compete, then we will give you back the money. As an mm. athlete, a former athlete yourself, how do slip-ups in administration affect the athlete? Training in itself is already demanding. Um, there's a lot that goes on mentally for any athletes. Anytime you see athletes perform at their best is because naturally everything comes together for them. But the biggest factor at this level really is the mental aspect for any athlete. Yeah. So the less that they have to worry about, it aids in their necessary great participation at the games. But to see what Miss Nelson has to go through now, yes. I would not like to be going through that emotional roller coaster yeah, myself. I was left out of the 2011 World Championships men 400 meter hurdles. Right. And 12 years later, the general secretary at the time, he came to me and he said, you know what, Jehu, I made a mistake, I'm the one to blame, and I'm very sorry that had to happen to you at the time. Right, and they're all, it's always easy, Jehu, to come and say sorry, right? It's, it's the easiest thing to say. But something we've sat on this show and discussed for quite some time, you know, Lance and myself, um, is that, you know, somebody has to be held accountable. And when I talk about accountable, it's not... They love to say here in Jamaica, it's, you're not running a patty shop. I disagree because I feel like a patty shop is run so professionally. It's a professional administration you're running, right? 
do you feel as if when things like this happen, you know, people should lose their jobs, you know, um, the office comes into question because you say 12 years now, it still affects you. Um, to simply just say sorry doesn't, doesn't fix that for you, doesn't give you the opportunity again. Sorry doesn't cut it. It was 14 at the time that I was still allowed at the last minute to compete. But I know with the new structure of the Olympic Games, if you are not on a certain long list or short list, the timing that you might be able to get to compete, it is very, very slim. And, and the key thing, about it, logistically as well, Kemba Nelson is here in Jamaica. She has to fly all the way to Paris. You know what it's like to travel across the ocean, across time zones, and then to be ready to run, a, to run an event without, with the, without the necessary recovery. There is jet lag because people don't seem to understand that when you travel 7,000 miles at 500 miles an hour, it's your body that's doing that travel as well, not just the plane. So you come in weary and you're likely to underperform. So you're actually hurting the chance of the athletes who prepare. This is their, this is their way of life. This is, your, this is your bread and butter. And you're denying it by these you know, administrative cock-ups from time to time. Yeah, it, it, according to science, it says that you need at least one day for every time so, zone every so difference, mm -hmm. right? So for Kemba to get over there in time, for her to acclimatize, for her to be sharp enough, given all she would have had to go through, then it seems pretty unlikely that mentally she could be up for the chance. Some athletes, I've known athletes that came off a plane, like Kim Collins back in the day, he, he said he could come off a plane and he could hit it from the go. Yeah. But Kemba Nelson, she's relatively young to the professional scene, and I would not have liked to be in her position at this point. I don't think anybody would. Now, Coach Francis, uh, speaking on Sherika Jackson, was coy when asked about the fitness of the reigning 200-meter world champion who pulled up during a meeting earlier this month in Europe, earlier this month. Before I think that's something you're going to have to address to her medical uh, personnel. But as far as I know, she, she appears to be okay to me. You don't want to the pressure, because at the end of the day, everybody is talking about experience and mental. It's all about speed. Right? When the gun fired, you run from there down to there, sir. Whoever gets there first wins. I'm quite so it has nothing to do with experience or mental pressure or whatever. He just has to be able to execute as well as he can. But I know how he has done his times, um, and I, I can't predict what's going, what he's going to do. Just to say that you know, he's. I don't think anybody has yet seen him run at his maximum for the. So we will see if that's going to happen in the Olympics and how fast that will be. Yeah, that was Stephen Francis there rubbishing claims about whether or not experience <laughs> or the lack thereof of Kishane Thompson well, it could affect him in the 100 meter finals. Um, you won the title in 2013, massive win for Trinidad and Tobago and yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> what, tell me a little bit about the experience that you had going into that, to that race that, was, that had a lot of talent and of course your own expectations burdening you as well. Does it require that much experience to win at that level as a freshie, so to speak? I would say there is some level of experience that is required. One, I think the most important thing is knowing how to manage yourself efficiently throughout the rungs. You've seen in many rungs some persons go out in the heats and they exert too much energy and effort and then for the semi-finals they are flat. My lack of experience at my first Olympics in 2012 cost me attaining a bronze medal. I went in, tied, third fastest time going into the finals, but I used too much of arousal and emotional energy in between the semi-finals, and I was not able to lift myself come the finals. Mm. Kishane, what Kishane has done at the national champs this year, competing in front of the Jamaican fans, running 9.8, 9.8, and 9.7, that doesn't speak to inexperience exactly. to me. Exactly. And Jehu, on that point, you just heard from Frano. Frano is a man that is not new to this, right? He's somebody that, you know, gets a lot of joy out of, you know, introducing these athletes. Um, you, you heard the manner in which he answered those questions. You know, he was having fun with the reporters, basically. Um, they asked him about experience. He said, no, speed wins the races. And, and he's onto something, truthfully. 
Um, experience is not everything. And then I think in the back of my mind, if you have a team like MVP, they're very, very close-knitted. You know, Frano is somebody, he takes a project and he works on it and he doesn't give up until that project is completed and he gets the pass mark. I would say that I understand the points about experience, but in this case, if you have a family unit like what I've seen at MVP, I would not be too worried about that. <laughs> When I watched that interview, I, I just smiled. Yeah, right? and the thing is, I know his personality, so I just yep. get kicked. Frano, time and time again, has produced many champions. He's done it at a big stage. He's played so many mind games with coaches and right. athletes throughout these years. And everything I hear just speaks of quiet confidence. Something is brewing in the MVB camp. Something <laughs> is about, a big storm is about to come. And I'm patiently waiting to see what Frano has in store but for us. But there are those who would argue, though, that back in 2004 in Athens, one of Paul was supposed to have gone through and won that final. And he stepped out at the moment and he froze. Everybody remember him sitting on the blocks and then lying on the track in a final that he was supposed to win. So I think that was where a lot of the concern comes from in terms of the lack of experience, because that was Asafa's big moment. He was, remember, had gone to Paris in 2003 and then was disqualified in the semifinals when John Drummond himself laid down on the track and saying that he wasn't moving. So I think that was probably where the concern comes from. But having spoken to Kishin a couple of times, that's not something that I'm particularly concerned about. But you never know until you step onto that track in front of that crowd because yeah. you mentioned the national championships in Jamaica. There are about maybe 6,000 people inside the national stadium. In France, you've been a crowd 10 times as large and 10 times as loud. Could that potentially have an impact on a young man who has never had this kind of experience before? Yeah, so that's a good thing. Because he never had that type of experience for him, it is not to say he hasn't competed with some of the best athletes. He's been on the Diamond League circuit. He's already ran 9-8. Mm -hmm. He's beaten a guy that was already in a World Championship final, a guy that was expected to medal for Jamaica yeah. and made it look so easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So I would say that type of experience that everybody is crying out for and speaking about, with Kishi and Kishi is the real deal. Right. Yeah. What do you suggest, though? I mean, given that you've had the experience at the World Championship level and the Olympics, when you go into a situation that is for the very first time, if you had Kishi and sitting in front of you right now, what would you say to him? Kishi and don't change anything. What you have been accustomed to doing, just continue doing it. And yeah? I think now is not the time to make any, make any changes or do anything differently. Yeah, and I think, you know, you say that, and I think that's exactly what Coach would say to him, because one of the reporters in that interview, because it was a lengthy interview, you know, we just played um, yeah. part of it for our viewers because of time constraints, was that, you know, hey, I know there's a lot of pressure on Kishane going into this Olympics, and he's like, oh, really? In other words, like, you know, I'm pretty sure they're talking to him. But, Jehu, I just want to move away from that quickly and just get your comments on Sharika Jackson because we played a soundbite about her as well. Um, it's, it's public knowledge that, you know, Paul Francis is the one that works one-on-one -on -one with Sharika Jackson. Um, coach was asked about her, so it was very easy to just move away from that answer. He was a bit shy when asked about her injury, just in the way he, re he responded. Do you think she'll be okay? I think that they are not going to risk running Sharika Jackson in the Olympics if she's not ready. Yeah, the camp has too much at stake and Sharika has too big of a stock to go out there and make a mess of herself. She's already been through not qualifying for the 200 already. So at this stage, we have big rivalries between the US <laughs> and Jamaica. They're not gonna chance it. Sharika is ready. She's gonna be ready. I mean, of course, when you look at what the cramp was, which we were told it was a cramp and that she began well, the word was that she began training just mere days afterwards. Would, she wouldn't have lost anything in terms of her preparation over those few days, would she? Now, the, the foundation work has already gone in throughout the off-season. We've seen her progress this year. She started dropping her times a little bit late in the season, so we could probably analyze or come to the fact that her coach is preparing her for the Olympic Games for Paris, so whatever was done up until July is mainly mere preparation to get her ready to withstand all the rungs, 100, 200, and even the 4x1 once Jamaica does decide to fill a team. All right. Elsewhere in Paris, Jordan Crooks of the Cayman Islands was, in, was the highlight of the Caribbean performances on the day, advancing to the semifinals of the men's 100-meter freestyle before eventually missing out on the final, finishing 7th in 48.10 seconds to rank 13th overall. 
Crooks had it made had made it to the semis with a blistering 48.01 seconds to finish third in heat three in what was the fast fifth fastest time overall. Wednesday's action we see Caribbean athletes participating in the triathlon, rowing, sailing, table tennis, and swimming. Yeah, so you know we're looking forward to tomorrow, J. Hugh. We have a lot of events coming up. Um, I know you've been on the Olympic show. What has you know really stood out from today for you, and what are you looking forward to most tomorrow? <laughs> well, obviously Jordan Crooks um, today making a semifinals. We haven't had any athletes that made it to the semifinal stage this year, um, and the mere fact that we have a lot of young swimmers now competing. Yeah at least for their first Olympics, so that will augur well for the next Olympics come early 2028. All right, well, we're going to wrap up this segment. Um, a pleasure having you on the Sportsmax Zone, and we hope you can join us again. Sure, very much. Maybe Thank when you. it's his special <laughs> event. Yeah, well, I, I'm events. hoping that we get a chance to talk to him about the 400-meter hurdles because that's one of the events yeah. that are going to really set the Olympics. Is alike. that your wish? We can, we can have that. Well, we Granted. Can, we can work it out. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, dear Hugh. Not a problem. Yeah, we're going to take a quick, quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about football. We find our love.